good one. There we go. How about that one? That's a really, really pretty one. Looking good. Beautiful bass. That's a nice one there. Healthy fish. Right now we're kind of chasing a bait fish bite and one really, really good way to cover water. It's really came on strong in the past few years is just is to use a swim bait. You know, a lot of people are starting to throw these a lot more now. And one of the, my favorite ways to throw it is actually on a weedless underspin hook. So you can see it's got a little blade on there. It's a four alt Gamakatsu weedless underspin hook, but this is the new Crush City Mayor. Really, really good swim bait, skips well, has a really good thumping action, pairs really nicely with this weedless underspin hook. So it's been one of my favorite ways to throw a swim bait over the past few years, but just a great way to cover water if you're trying to imitate shad. All right, so the coolest thing about this new Mayer swim bait is it's got this little top appendage on the back. I don't really know if that makes the body shimmy or what, but it has a very tight, consistent action. The tail has a good bit of thump, a good bit of kick, but the most important part of it is the body of it actually shimmies the whole time you're, you know, winding it back. So, I mean, it's got a really good tail action, but when that body's shimmying, that seems to be like the second thing that you have to key on whenever you're fishing swim baits, because it really seems to make you get more bites if that if the actual body of the bait will shake back and forth. So a lot of swim baits have really good tail actions, but they don't have that little shimmy to the body. And this one has that shimmy, and that's I think that's why it catches them so well. So the, the places where I'm trying to throw this swim bait is I'm just on the bank right now, and I'm trying to throw it closest to the tightest cover, the thickest grass mats, the wood that's sticking out, or if I just see any kind of little depression or nook that sticks out from the bank or a place where it's a little bit deeper. I'm just looking for anywhere that I think those bass are gonna set up and try to ambush bait. So this is just a bait where I feel like if I throw it in front of one, I'm gonna get a bite. So I just cover water with it and I just throw everywhere that kind of, I just let my brain kind of pick of the places that I think are, you know, the best high percentage while, while I'm going down the bank. And I just throw this bait out there and wind it relatively slow but I got an addiction to watching them eat it. So I try to keep it foot, foot and a half below the surface just so I can barely see it. Then when they come out on it, I get to watch it all go down and that's half the fun for me. So the times whenever I would like to, you know, start using the weedless underspin over like a spinner bait, vibrating jig, all that type of stuff. It's usually gonna be anytime I'm fishing for spotted bass, I usually throw it a good bit pre-spawn and post-spawn, but for largemouth, I catch them really good on it post-spawn. Around the shad spawn, throughout summer, around brush and stuff like that, but for the most part, whenever those fish first pull up, it's pretty easy to catch them on your standard spinner baits, vibrating jigs, all that type of stuff. But it seems like after they've been shallow for a couple months, this is just a little bit more of a unique bait that a lot of people don't throw. A lot more finessey, but still has that flash of a blade. So. I like to pick it up, you know, whenever it's highly pressured around, you know, and throw it in place of spinner bait, vibrating jig, that kind of stuff. That one bit on the very end of a cast. There we go. It's a pretty one. That's what this place is famous for. Them beautiful little spotted bass. Look at them red eyes on them. Beautiful fish. a nice one. He ate the old mayor. So for this setup, this uh, weedless underspin, it's actually got a pretty thick gauge hook on it. So you can't really throw a lighter power rod. You know, it's got a, it's got a really good hook on it. And I like that because I throw it in heavy cover, bigger swim baits. I want to be able to set the hook really hard. What that means is you have to throw a, like a medium heavy rod to really get that hook in. So this right here is a 13 fishing Envy, seven foot three, medium heavy, extra fast. I'm throwing a 7.5 to one gear ratio reel. 
you know, I like to watch this thing come back to me, so I've got a little bit of a faster reel on it. It's not an eight, but a lot of my reaction baits I throw on a 6.8. I feel like the sweet spot for this bait, though, is that, that 7.5 to one. It really seems to be the way that I like to fish it. It keeps up with the pace I like to go, but kind of an all around do everything rod, and it's a really good bait to throw on it. So that last fish bit, you know, kind of from a standard current break place, you know, even though there's not any current today or there's not very much at all, it's very unnoticeable. You know, we're fishing in a place where the current is kind of king up here and them spotted bass love to be as close as they can get to the swiftest current, you know, almost year round. So I've been kind of experimenting a little bit today. I've been fishing places where they might be roaming to and stuff like that, but it seems like they're just getting or they're still in the same places they would normally be even if there was if there was a lot of current even though there's not so i'm just kind of throwing this thing up there as tight as i can to anywhere that looks like it'd be a really good current break that a you know spotted bass or largemouth might want to sit so any kind of a root system of a tree that's a little bit bigger if there's two or three trees washed together all that kind of stuff that's really what i'm keying on today i mean every single cast i'm trying to make it land you know, just a couple feet past where I think the fish are sitting and then just reel it over them. And I feel like there's a pretty short strike window, even though there's not current. And usually on some places they'll roam a lot, but it seems like today there's a really short strike window and they're sitting exactly where you would expect them to. So I'm just trying to make as many accurate casts as I can to that type of stuff. You know, just a couple feet is about the only strike zone it seems like. So we've been fishing with an underspin good bit today. I'm gonna show y'all how to rig up the new Crush City Mayer. This is a four inch green shad mayer. You know, this is a really, really good bait to throw on an underspin, a weedless underspin specifically, because of the, this bait still has a ton of body shimmy, even though it's got this big hook in it. And that's really, really important. A lot of baits, when you put a big hook in like this, it'll kind of mute down that action, but it does not do it for this one. So this is a four alt Gamakatsu weedless underspin. So pretty cool bait. I'll tell you one thing that's really cool about this is it's got twice as much holding power in this actual screw lot because there's two pieces of metal coiled around each other instead of just one. So it gives twice as much holding power. And you could tell it at the end of the day, these swim baits, they get pretty expensive. So it's nice to have one last twice as long, but just screw it on there, get it extremely straight, right in the middle of the nose of the bait. That's extremely important. Another thing is I want it to be able to swivel a little bit. I don't want the bait pressed up against the actual eye of the hook. Cause if you do that, a lot of times the bait will get, have a little bit of tension on it and it'll get kicked off to the side a lot, it seems like. So now I really want to take a lot of time and map out where that bait's, where that hook's gonna come out the top of that bait. So right there is gonna come out right in front of that top fin. I'm gonna stick it through the bottom, make it come out as cleanly as possible. Then I just barely skin hook it in the top. So I try to rig it as straight as I possibly can and don't bury the hook point too far into the body of the bait of the bait because when those fish are biting it, you want it to come through the least amount of plastic possible. But that's the way I rig it. That's straight right there. It'll have a good body shimmy if it's rigged like that and it'll track really clean and pure through the water. So that's the way I rig it, four inch mayor. Covering water this morning, throwing the mayor on a weedless underspin. Pretty cool to be able to generate some bites on a little bit more of a finessey power fishing bait. 